Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be going over CS50 Problem Set 1 Cache, and this is the updated version for 2022. But before we jump into it, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications on, because I'm going to be posting videos every single week, so you don't want to miss one. Now let's jump straight into Cache. Okay, so in Cache, the whole objective is we need to ask some input from the user for some number of cents. And then our program needs to output the, no the minimum number of coins it would take to make up that amount of cents. Okay, so what I said may sound confusing, so let's jump straight into an example. So let's say the user type in 68, okay? Uh, so cents owed is 68. So now we need to tell the user how many coins, how many coins we need to make up 68 cents. Assuming that there are only quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, okay? So the number of quarters is needed. How do we go about this here? Well, we can see, first of all, that we will need quarters because, again, let's compare it here. So 68 cents and 68 is greater than 25. So this means that we will need a quarter. We'll need at least one quarter. So let's see, 68 minus 25 will give us 43. And then... We compare it again. Is 43 greater than 25? Well, yes, it is. So we can use another quarter. So we can do 43 minus 25 now. And that'll give us 18. Okay, and now we can check again. Can we use another quarter? 18 cents left. Okay, no, because 18 is smaller than 25. So we cannot use another quarter. So how many quarters do we need? We need one, two quarters, okay. And now let's move on to dimes. So we know that the remainder is now 18 cents left. So 18, is 18 greater than 10? Yes, so we can use a dime. And that'll leave us with eight cents remaining. And now we check, eight is not greater than 10. Eight is smaller than 10. So we can't use another dime, which means we only need a total of one dime, right, one 10 cent coin. And now there's eight, eight cents remaining. So eight, is greater than five, so we can use a nickel, right? And then let's minus five. So the remainder is now three. Is three greater than five? No, it's not. So we can't use any more nickels, right? So we only need one nickel here. And what about here? So now we have three cents remaining. How many pennies do we need to make three cents? Well, we'll need three pennies, right? Because it's one cent each. So we'll need three pennies, and then that'll leave us with a remainder of zero, okay? So we need a total of two quarters, one dime, one nickel, and three pennies to make up 68 cents. So that's a total of two plus one plus one plus three will give us seven. Okay, so basically now the program is when the user inputs 68, our program needs to print out seven, which is, a two, which is the minimum number of coins needed, right? Okay, so the logic here is very simple. Now let's put it into code. So this is the distribution code that CS50 gives us. And okay, let's go through the distribution code real quick. So on top, obviously we have our header files, cs50.h and standardio.h. And then we have some functions called, okay, they're just prototypes. So let's go into the main code. So first things first is ask how many cents the customer is owed, right? So first to get some input from the user, right? Similar to Mario, we know how to get input from the user. Okay, now let's go further into the program and it says int quarters equals calculate quarters. Okay, so this is what we need. Uh, this is a function called calculate quarters, but they don't tell us how to calculate it. And that's what we need to write. That's the part that we need to write of the code. So we need to make this function calculate quarters, right? And then it says cents equals to cents minus quarters times 25. So this may seem confusing at first, but it's it's exactly what we actually just did. So cents, so it's just updating the value of cents. So again, let's say it's 68, right? So 68 minus the number of quarters times 25. So what we did here is basically just saying, since we use two quarters here, so it's just 68 minus two times 25, right? It's the same thing what we did here. It's just updating the value of cents. And then after that, we move on to dimes. So just remember in our example earlier, after we used two quarters, 68 minus 50 was 18, right? According to our example. So now we move on to dimes. And again, we need to, they give us a function calculate dimes, but they don't tell us what's in that function. So that's what we need to write again. 
and then it does cents equals cents minus dimes times 10, right? It's exactly what we did earlier. So for example, let's say it was 18 from our earlier example, 18 minus one times 10, right? Earlier we used two quarters, so here it was two times 25. Here it's one times 10 because we only use one dime in our example. Okay, and then it goes and does this same thing for nickels times five again, and pennies times one, obviously. So basically they need to calculate the total number of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies in order to make up the, the cents owed, right? And then finally, coins, int coins, okay, so they have an integer called coins, and that just sums up the total of quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies, right? So as we said in our example earlier, this is the seven, right? When the user input 68, our program outputs a seven. So then finally, it just prints out the total number of coins. Okay, seems simple enough. So how do we actually get into it? So first things first, we need to write a function to get sense, right? To get an input from the user. And if you remember how we get some input from the user, it's using the get function, right? Okay. So first things first, let's make an integer. Let's call it sense, int sense. Okay. And now we want to get some input from the user. And we know that the input is going to be an integer, right? Because we want to get a number from the user. So we use get int. Okay, so let's use, um, let's call it int sense. Oh, sorry, we don't need to say int anymore. So let's say sense equals to get underscore int, right? That's how we get some input from the user. And let's prompt the user and say sense owed, right? Okay. But now again, there's a slight problem here because just like Mario, there's a condition, right? We can't have the user inputting a negative number because we only want positive numbers, right? So if the user inputs a negative number, we want the, we want to keep on repeating. We want to keep on asking them sense owed, sense owed, sense owed until they put in a positive number. So we want to reject all negative numbers. So for that, it sounds like we can use a loop, right? So let's go ahead and use a do while loop. So do the following, right? While a certain condition is true. And now we want to put this in our do while loop because if there is a condition, right? So prompt the user for sense owed while they put in a negative number, right? So while sense is less than zero. So what this means is keep on asking the user for sense owed while they're putting in a negative number. So it's going to keep on prompting them for the number of sense owed until they actually put in a positive number, which is what we want, right? Okay, so this is pretty similar to Mario, pretty simple so far. Um, and finally, we want to return, now we don't want to print the number of cents, right? That's what we got from the user. We don't want to return zero, we want to return cents, okay? Everything makes sense logically so far. And finally, now here, we want to calculate the number of quarters, right? Okay, so again, let's use the similar logic like we did in our example here. Um, but first of all, let's make an integer, right? Int quarters, and let's set it to zero because it starts at zero, obviously. So now here, what's the logic? Uh, let's say like, it's we need a loop for sure because we need to keep checking if, whether it's greater than 25 or not, right? Like 68 minus, is 68 greater than 25, first of all? Yes, it is, right? That's why we use a quarter and we minus 25. And then on our second iteration, we have to check. Is 43 greater than 25? And if it is, then we need to minus 25 cents and add another quarter, right? So over here we use two quarters. So how do we translate this into code? Well, let's go ahead and try. We know we need a loop. Let's use a while loop. So while sense is greater than or equal to 25, right? What do we need to do? We want to update the value of sense to sense minus 25 and quarters plus plus, which means add a quarter, right? So we've not come across this syntax before, but it basically means add a quarter. So it starts at zero, and every time this happens, add a quarter, okay? So again, what's the logic here? Let's say, let's use an example. So let's say it was 68 again. So while sense is greater, so while 68, is 68 greater than 25? Yes, it is. So we update the value. So we do 68 minus 25, right? And then add a quarter, because we've already minus 25. So that's one quarter. And now the new value is 43. 
So we check again, is 43 greater than 25? Yes, it is. So again, we minus 43 minus 25 and add a quarter. So that puts us at two quarters now. And then again, check again, for, uh, the new value is 18. So is 18 greater than 25? No, it's not. So now we just want to return quarters and then move on to dimes, right? So the logic here is very simple. It's exactly the same like this. It's just putting it into code. And now for dimes, it's very similar process. So once again, let's make a function, let's make a, a variable called dimes in dimes and we set it to zero, of course. So while now, it's very similar, while sense is greater than or equal to 10, right? What do we want to do? We want to do sense equals to sense minus 10 and do dimes plus plus, which means add a dime, right? It's very similar logic, right? So following the previous example, let's say it was 18 cents. So we check, is 18 greater than 10? Well, yes, it is. So we do this for the following. We do 18 minus 10, which leaves us then with 8 cents and add a dime since we already minus the 10. So that gives us one dime. And now since we have 8 cents left, is 8 greater than 10? Well, no, it's not. So we quit cents. We just want to return. We want to return dimes and then move on to nickels, right? Which are 5 cent coins. Same logic here as well. We're working our way down here. So let's make a variable again. Let's call it nickels. In nickels equal to zero. And again, it's the same logic again. While cents is greater than or equal to five, what do we want to do? Cents equals to cents minus five and nickels plus plus, right? Which means add a nickel. It's the exact same logic as the code we've been doing before. And here we want to return nickels, right? So eight cents, eight is greater than five. 8 minus 5 will give us 3 and add a nickel since we've already minus the 5 and 3 is now uh, 3 is now less than 5 so we don't add another nickel right instead we move to pennies so it's, a, it's the same logic here it's the exact same logic as what we did here but we're just putting it into code right and finally we do the same for pennies I'm sure by now you guys can figure out uh, while cents is greater than or equal to 1 what do we want to do? Cents equals to cents minus one pennies plus plus, right? And this is just updating the value of cents here. Pennies plus plus, and finally we want to return pennies. Okay, so now we've calculated the number of everything, the number of uh, quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. And now here they've already in the distribution code, they've already made an integer called coins to add it all up. And they even have the print function to print everything out. So let's see if our code is correct here. Let's compile the program, make cache. Okay, so there seems to be an error here. And that's actually because, ah, okay. So a silly mistake here. We forgot to initialize pennies to zero. So int pennies equal to zero, right? So sometimes silly mistakes can happen even though it's such a simple problem set, right? So let's make cache. Okay, compiles dot slash cache to run it. Okay, it prompts me for something. Uh, sense owed, let's try 68. And it prints out seven, right? Which matches up with our with our example earlier. So that makes sense. Let's just try another example just to make sure that it's correct. Let's just try this one, 99. Okay, and it should, it should output nine based on CS50's uh, example. So let's do dot slash cache, sense owed 99. And it inputs nine. Okay, so that's correct. Everything seems to be correct here. But just to double check, as we do with all problem sets, let's run the check 50 line here. This is just going to tell us whether our code is correct or not. And by the way, guys, if you enjoyed the videos, if you think they're helpful, please make sure to leave a like on the video. Please make sure to subscribe with notifications on so you get posted, so you get notified every single time I post a video, right? I'm going to be posting videos every single week so we can get through this course together, guys. Okay, so now let's wait for it to check. And while this is checking, I just want to tell you guys also, there's also points for style, okay? That's the format of your code. So not the correctness, but the style. So it's worth running this as well because it is graded, right? So if this is correct, if the check 50 comes correct, make sure you check for style. And finally, don't forget to submit using this code as well, okay? Okay, we're still waiting for results here. Okay, so everything's green, which means everything's correct, right? After this, you can go ahead and check your code for style. And if that's all correct, you just have to go ahead and submit your code. I'm not going to do that here because I've already submitted the program. So that's all for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and see you all next time.
Bye, David.